This money, however, was certainly not enough to enable the family to live off the interest. It was enough to maintain them for perhaps one or two years, but no more. That's to say, it was money that should not be really touched, but set aside for emergencies. Money to live on had to be earned. His father was healthy but old and lacking self-confidence. During the five years he had not been working, the first holiday in life that had been full of strain and no success, he had put on a lot of weight and become very slow and clumsy. Would Gregor's elderly mother now have to go and earn money? She suffered from asthma, and it was a strain for her to just about move, move about in the home. Every other day would be spent struggling for breath on the sofa by the open window. Would his sister have to go out and earn money? She was still a child of seventeen. Her life up until then had been very enviable, consisting of wearing nice clothes, sleeping late, helping out in the business, joining in with a few modest pleasures, and most of all playing the violin. Whenever they began to talk of the need to earn money, Gregor would always first let go of the door and then throw himself onto the cool leather sofa next to it, as he became quite hot with shame and regret. He would often lie there the whole night, not sleeping a wink, but scratching at a leather from hours on end. Or he might go to all the effort of pushing a chair to the window, climbing up onto the sill, and propped up by the chair leaning on the window to stare out of it. He had used to feel a great sense of freedom from doing this, but doing it now was obviously something more remembered than experienced, as what he actually saw in this way was becoming less distinct every day. Even things that were quite near, he had used to curse the ever-present view of the hospital across the street, but now he could not see it at all. And even if he had not known that he had lived in Charlotte and Strauss, which was a quiet street despite being in the middle of the city, he could have thought that it was looking out the window at a barren waste where the gray sky and the gray earth mingled inseparably. His observant sister only needed to notice the chair twice before she would always push it back to its exact position by the window after she had been tidying up the room, and even left the inner pane of the window open from then on. If Gregor had only been able to speak to his sister and thank her for all she had to do for him, it would have been easier for him to bear it, but it, it was time that it caused him pain. His sister naturally tried as far as possible to pretend there was no nothing burdensome about him, and the longer it went on, of course, the better she was able to do so. But as time went by, Gregor was also able to see through it so much better. It became very unpleasant for him now whenever she entered the room. No sooner had she come in than she would quickly close the door out of a precaution so that no one would have to suffer the view into Gregor's room. She would then go straight into the window and pull it hurriedly open, almost as if she was suffocating. Even if it was cold, she would stay at the window, breathing deep for a little while. She would alarm Gregor twice a day with this running about and noise-making. He would stay under the couch, shivering the whole while, knowing full well that he would, she would certainly have liked to spare him this ordeal. But it was impossible for her to be in the same room with him with the windows closed. One day, about a month after Gregor's transformation, when his sister no longer had any particular reason to be shocked at his appearance, she came into the room a little earlier than usual and found him still staring out the window, motionless, and just where he would be the most horrible. In itself, his sister's not coming into the room would have been no surprise for Gregor, as it would have been difficult for her to immediately open the window while he was still there. But not only did she not come in, she went straight back and closed the door behind her. A stranger would have thought he had threatened her and tried to bite her. Gregor went straight to hide himself under the couch, of course, but he had to wait until midday before his sister came back and seemed much more uneasy than usual. It made him realize that she still found his appearance unbearable and would continue to do so, so she probably even had to overcome the urge to flee when she saw the little bit of him that protruded from under the couch. One day, in order to spare her even this sight, he spent four hours carrying the bedsheet over to the couch on his back and arranged it so that he was completely covered and his sister would not be able to see him, even if she bent down. If she did not think this sheet was necessary, then all she had to do was take it off again, as it was clear that it was no pleasure for Gregor to cut himself off so completely. She left the sheet where it was. Gregor even thought he glimpsed a look of gratitude one time when he carefully looked out from under the couch to see how his sister liked the new arrangement. For the first fourteen days, Gregor's parents could not bring themselves to come into the room to see him. He would often hear them say how he appreciated all the work his sister was doing, even though before they had seen him as a girl that was somewhat useless and frequently been annoyed by her. But now the two of them, father and mother, would often wait outside the door of Gregor's room while his sister tidied up in there, and as soon as she went out again she would have to tell them exactly how everything looked, what Gregor had eaten, how she had behaved this time, and whether, perhaps, any slight improvement could be seen. His mother also wanted to go and visit Gregor relatively soon, but his father and sister soon persuaded her against it. Gregor listened very closely to all of this and fully approved. Later, though, she had to be held back by force, which made her call out, Let me see, go and see Gregor. He is my unfortunate son. Can't you understand that I have to see him? 
and Gregor would think to himself that maybe it would just be better if his mother came in, not every day, of course, but one day a week. Perhaps she could understand everything much better than his sister, who, for all her courage, was still just a child after all, and really might have not had an adult's appreciation of the burdensome and job she had taken on. Gregor still wished to see his mother wished to see his mother was soon realized. Out of consideration for his parents, Gregor wanted to avoid being seen at the window during the day. The few square meters of the floor did not give him much room to crawl about. It was just hard to lie quietly through the night. His food soon stopped giving him any pleasure at all. And so, to entertain himself, he got into the habit of crawling up and down the walls and ceiling. He was especially fond of hanging from the ceiling. It was quite different from lying on the floor. He could breathe more freely. His body had a light swing next to it. And up there, relaxed and almost happy, it might happen that he would surprise even himself by letting go of the ceiling and landing on the floor with a crash. But now, of course, he had far better control of his body than before, and even with a fall as great as that, caused himself no damage. Very soon, his sister noticed Gregor's new way of entertaining himself. He had, after all, left traces of the adhesive from his feet as he crawled about and got it into her head to make it as easy as possible for him by removing the furniture that got in his way, especially the chests of drawers and the desk. Now, this was not something that she would be able to do by herself. She did not dare to ask for help by her, from her father. The sixteen-year-old maid had carried on bravely since the cook had left, but she certainly would have not have helped by this. She even had asked to be allowed to keep the kitchen locked at all times, and never to have opened the door unless it was especially important. So his sister had no choice but to choose some time when Gregor's father was not there and fetch his mother to help her. As she approached the room, Gregor could hear his mother express her joy, but once at the door, she went silent. First, of course, his sister came in and looked round to see if that everything in the room was all right, and only then did her mother enter. Gregor had hurriedly pulled the sheet down lower over the couch and put more folds into it so that everything really looked as if it had been thrown down by chance. Gregor also refrained at this time from spying out from under the sheet. He gave up the chance to see his mother until later and was simply glad that she had come. You can come in, he can't be seen, said his sister, obviously leading her in by the hand. The old chest of drawers was too heavy for a pair of feeble women to be heaving about, but Gregor listened as they pushed in from this place, his sister always talking about on the heaviest part of work for herself and ignoring his mother's warnings that she would strain herself. This lasted a very long time. After laboring at it for fifteen minutes or more, his mother said it would be better to leave the chest where it was. One thing, it was too heavy for them to get the job finished before Gregor's father got home and leaving it in the middle of the room, it would be in his way even more. And for another thing, it wasn't even sure that taking the furniture away would really be any help to him. She thought just the opposite, the sign of the bare wall saddled to her right, to her heart. And why wouldn't Gregor feel the same way about it? He'd been used to the furniture in his room for a long time, and it would really make him feel abandoned to be in an empty room like that. Then, quietly, almost whispering, as if Gregor wanted, as if wanting Gregor, whose whereabouts she did not know, to hear not even the tone of her voice, as she was convinced that he did not understand her words, she added, And by taking the furniture away, won't it seem like we're showing that we've given up all hope of improvement and we're abandoning him to cope for himself? I think it'd be best to leave the room exactly the way it was before, so that when Gregor comes back again, he'll find everything unchanged and he'll be able to forget it all the time in between all the easier. Hearing these words from his mother made Gregor realize that the lack of any direct human co communication, along with the monotonous life led by the family these two months must have made him confused. He could think of no other way of explaining to himself why he had seriously wanted this room emptied out. Had he really wanted to transform his room into a cave, a warm room fitted out with the nice furniture he'd inherited, that would have let him crawl around unimpeded in any direction, but would have also let him quickly forget his past when he had still been human. He had come very close to forgetting, and it had only been the voice of his mother, unheard for so long, that had shaken him out of it. Nothing should be removed. Everything had to stay. He could not do without the good influence of furniture had on his condition. And if the furniture made it difficult for him to crawl about mindlessly, that was not a loss, but a great advantage. His sister, unfortunately, did not agree. She had become used to the idea, not without reason, that she was Gregor's spokesman to his parents about the things that concerned him. This meant that his father's advice now was sufficient enough reason for her to insist on removing not only the chest of drawers and the desk, as she had thought at first, but all the furniture apart from the all-important couch. It was more than childish perversity, of course, or the unexpected confidence she had re recently acquired that made her insist. She had indeed noticed that Gregor needed a lot of room to crawl about in, whereas the furniture, as far as anyone could see, was of no use to him at all. Girls of that age, though, do become enthusiastic about things and feel that they must get their way whenever they can. Perhaps this is what t 
attempted greet to make Gregor's situation seem even more shocking than it was, so that he could do even more for him. Greet would probably be the only one who would dare enter a room dominated by Gregor crawling around the bare walls by himself. So she refused to let her mother dissuade her. Gregor's mother already looked uneasy in his room. She soon stopped talking and helped Gregor's sister to get the chest of drawers out with the strength she had. The chest of drawers was something that Gregor could do without if he wanted to, but the writing desk had to stay. Hardly had the two women pushed the chest of drawers, groaning out of the room, than Gregor poked his head out from under the couch to see what he could do about it. He meant to be careful and considerate as he could, but unfortunately it was his mother who came back first, while Greet in the next room had her arms around the chest, pushing and pulling at it from side to side by herself, without, of course, moving it an inch. His mother was not used to the sight of Gregor. He might have made her ill, so Gregor hurried backwards to the far end of the couch. In his startlement, though, he was not able to prevent the sheet at its front from moving a little. It was enough to attract his mother's attention. She stood very still, remained there for a moment, and then went back out to greet. Gregor kept trying to reassure himself that nothing unusual was happening. It was just a few be pieces of furniture being moved, after all. But he soon had to admit that the women going to and fro, their little calls to each other, the scraping of the furniture on the floor, all these little things made him feel as if he were being assailed from all sides. With his head and legs pulled in against him and his body pressed to the floor, he was forced to admit himself that he could not stand all this much longer. They were emptying his room out, taking away everything that was dear to him. They had already taken out the chest containing his fret saw and other tools, and now they threatened to remove the writing desk with its place clearly worn out on the floor, the desk where he had done his homework as a business trainee at high school. Even while they had been at infant school, he really could not wait any longer to see whether the two women's intentions were good. He had nearly forgotten where they were anyway, as they were now too tired to say anything while they worked, and he could only hear their feet as they stepped heavily on the floor. So while the women were lent leant against the desk in the other room, catching their breath. He sailed out, changed directions four times, not knowing what he should say first before his attention was suddenly caught by a picture on the wall, which was already denuded of everything else that had been on it, of the lady dressed in the copious fur. He hurried up to the picture and pressed himself against its glass. It held firmly, and it felt good on his hot belly. This picture, at last, now totally covered by Gregor, would certainly be taken away by no one. He turned his head to face the door in the living room so that he could watch the women when they came back.